Hello everybody, Fiddlesticks has got an amazing kit and I'm going to explain it in terms of supporting for you in this guide. Let's start with those abilities. Dread, Fiddlesticks passive, reduces the magic resistance of all nearby enemy units by 10. But if you're trying to do something sneaky, do take care, as a wise opponent might be able to spot this debuff on something and run away before you have your chance to make an impact. Fiddle's Q is Terrify. This is an active which fears a target enemy, causing it to run around aimlessly and prevents any action for the duration of the fear. Always remember that spell shields like the ones that Sivir and Morgana and many others have got will actually negate the fear. At its full rank, it's 3 seconds of fear unless the enemy has any tenacity or cleanse ability. It's amazing to put on an enemy bruiser who's fed, diving your AD carry, or you can even use it aggressively and fear one of their carries to stop their damage. Philistic's W is Drain. It's a channeling spell which deals magic damage and heals himself for a percentage of the damage done for each second. It lasts for a maximum of 5 seconds or until it is interrupted or the enemy runs out of range. To get the most out of Drainus' support, you need to make sure that you're not going to be interrupted when you use it. It's also quite good to use to sustain and keep it in the lane, and you can also secure objectives without taking much damage such as Dragon and Baron if you're with your team. Fiddlesticks E is Dark Wind. It throws out a crow which strikes an enemy target and it may continue to bounce to nearby enemies up to 5 times, dealing damage and silencing each enemy it hits for 1.2 seconds. It may strike the same target multiple times and does deal increased damage to minions. You should be using this as your form of harassment in the laning phase and always save it for important targets such as Katarina when they're going to use their ultimate so you can stop it. It's best used when there's less minions or two enemies together. Perhaps try and synergize it with your fear using it just before it runs out to stop the enemy from flashing if appropriate. Fiddlesticks ultimate works by channeling for 1.5 seconds and then teleporting to a nearby location with a ton of badass birds to hit the crap out of your enemies. You can jump over a lot of terrain with this, more than it's actually indicated by the circle. Be free to ask any questions in the comments or just go and experiment with yourself, but here is one example of how far you just can go. So moving on to the runes and masteries now, this is what I take for my marks, this is what I take for my seals, this is what I take for my glyphs, and this is what I take for my quintess. Now obviously you can see a variation here. For example, if I'm against a difficult lane such as a Blitzcrank or Thresh, I would take the Health Quintessences, Magic Resistance Glyphs, Armor Marks and Seals, but then if I was against a lane that I could play more aggressive, I might take some of the other options such as Penetration and Damage. For Masteries, I find that I run 113.16 the most, just because I prefer having these extra things in defense and utility, as well as the improved exhaust, but there's nothing wrong with running 0921 and actually getting the extra reduced cooldowns and increased mobility as well, but this is a lot more sort of dangerous in terms of positioning and sort of squishiness in the lane. So for the laney matchups, I'll let you have a quick glance at these two pictures, but what I have done is attached a document in the description that explains them a lot more for those players who really want to get down and dirty with fiddlesticks. So I'm going to go into some commentary now and cover the skilling order and some item builds and what to do in the laning phase and what to do in team fights. So Fiddlestick's skilling order is quite interesting. If you're against the lane without sustain, what you could always do is max E first because you have extra harass. But if you're against the lane without sustain that's very difficult, for example like Thresh or Leona, you could always max Q first then. But if you're against the lane that has sustain, I'd recommend maxing Q because they're probably going to heal up the harass you do with E. In terms of your W, I just take a point on it whenever I need the extra sustain. But it does do a lot of damage and I'm yet to experiment in game of what the effect is if you take a couple of points in it earlier. Moving on to some tips about the laning phase. I'm going to show you an example of a difficult lane against Graves and Thresh. In a lane like this you want to be using your E to harass the enemy because they don't have any sustain. Whenever there's a couple of minions left and the AD carry goes the last hit, throw an E on them and try and always save your Q for the enemy AD carry as the control will make you win most of the trades especially if you're maxing it first. You can also use your Q to make the enemy AD carry miss getting some C Yes. Try and stay at max range all the time and be extremely aware of Thresh and Blitzcrank etc grabs by standing behind minions as much as you can. So here I want to talk about what happens. Thresh lands a grab on Twitch and I immediately go in to fear Graves to counter it. I then follow it with my E for the damage and we start doing quite a bit of damage to Graves to be able to follow up with plenty of auto attacks. It is very important that if you ever had any health potions, you always pop them early game when you're going to go for a fight because that little bit of regeneration might be the difference between getting a kill and staying alive or not. 
Here's just one more example of me using the fear to counter engage. The point of me showing you this is that you're all aware that this is what you should do against the lane that can be quite difficult because the control of their AD carry stops most of the damage in the lane. Now when you come to hitting level 6, Fiddlesticks is amazing at going all in. Here I go in and silence Graves, this is so he can't dash or flash away. At this point I then fear him as Mundo walks into the lane and charge up my ultimate and wreck havoc with tons of crows on the two of them. We're only able to pick up one kill, but when you go all in like this, if you can synergize your E with your fear, you can control the positioning of their enemy for so long that most of the time you can get a good kill or at least make them back. But I must make myself very clear, never ever engage where mid lane or jungler is missing because they might just turn around in your face and you'll get counter engaged on and you will die. So let's analyse some of the team fight mechanics as Fiddlestick support. Now when I feel threatened, my automatic response with Fiddle is to try and protect my carries with my kit. Now I make a mistake in this fight by stepping into the smoke screen of Graves and I lose vision on Jarvin. So at this point I decide that we're going to go all in thinking that I have my exhaust up. And then here you can see that Jarvin is actually about to kill Twitch but you're able to use that amazing Q of yours that you've been maxing to fear the dangerous target and save your AD carry. Now this fight I make a huge mistake. I get grabbed and I know that Graves is coming in. I decide to silence Thresh so he can't box me and fear him. Now luckily Graves misses his ultimate now but because I didn't put my fear on the damage dealer I nearly died and I had to flash away. My starting items are quite normal with the fairy charm, health, pots and wards, but then I tried to build towards my side stone and then my philosopher's stone and then my boots. If the lane's going really well, I'll try and pick up a card just lucky pick before 15 minutes as well. Now Fiddlestick's choice of items can be adjusted to suit a play style that you prefer, but always remember that you should be the one doing the majority of warding. Take a side stone with every build. Now you can either progress into utility or damage. Damage is probably something that you should only go if you're doing really well, but even then, consider do you need any of the utility items based based upon their team composition. For example, if they have lots and lots of crowd control, you might want to consider taking a couple of these utility items, otherwise go for the offensive ones. Twin Shadows and Mobility Boots are all completely fine and they fit into both the utility and the offensive role. No item's better or worse than another, as long as you can justify why you take something, it's absolutely fine. So if you have any questions about builds, do leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Now there's two ways to utilise Fiddlestick's kit in team fights towards the end of the game and let me just summarise those for you one last time. You can save your fear for whoever's diving your AD carry and protect him as much as you can. It's got a relatively low cooldown and you can keep people control for quite some time with it, especially if they haven't got any tenacity or a cleanse. Or you can build some offensive items instead of being a pain and you can go and try and do a little bit more damage. You can adjust to whatever your playstyle is and you can have as much fun as you want in game playing utility as you could playing AP. So good luck with Fiddlesticks everybody. If you've learned something make sure you give it a thumbs up. It's part of the video production process to answer any questions so if you have any please leave a comment and I will try my best to reply to you. If you've had a good time on the channel go and check out some of the other support guides and you might learn something. Thanks everybody, see you later.